Welcome back to New Rockstars, I'm Eric Voss, and Marvel's Eternals post credit scene, spoilers ahead, revealed what is really now unavoidable front page news that Harry Styles has joined the MCU as Eros, aka Star Fox, Eternal of Titan, and brother to Thanos, and it's that family link that has most of us a bit curious, because uh, visually speaking, one of these things is not like the other. One, a smoldering cut of beef arousing parts of us we didn't know existed, and the other one, Harry Styles. But to fully understand what Eros' arrival means for the Eternals, the Celestials, the Asgardians, and the rest of the MCU, we must explain his place in Marvel's ever-expanding ancestral genealogy, something Eros may be reluctant to do because it would give prosecutors access to his DNA. But we must do this! The MCU See you, family tree explained. Morning edition. So we got the Eternals, Icarus, Ajax, Thena, Fastos, Gilgamesh, Cersei, Kingo, Markari, Sprite, and Drig, all created by the Celestials. We actually learn in Eternals that these ten are actually synthetic beings, built and rebooted by Erishim in the World Forge, in order to allow intelligent life like humans on Earth to evolve and feed a celestial seed buried inside the planet, repeating the cycle past Eternal groupings have done on countless planets. The Deviants were the Celestials' original creations as well, made to clear out native Apex predators on a planet so intelligent life could thrive. So we got those three, Eternals, Deviants, and Humans. And the movie actually includes a fun hint to this lineage by giving Deviants four eyes, a step down from the six eyes of the Celestials, but still a step up from the two of Eternals and Humans. However, these ten Eternals are not the only Eternals in existence because we meet Eros, Eternal of Titan, brother to Thanos, confirming that Thanos is also an Eternal as he is in the comics, but he possesses a Deviant gene that results in his scarred purpose skin. In Infinity War, Red Skull greeted Thanos as Son of Alars, meaning Thanos and Eros come from an eternal bloodline, their offspring. Their mother was Suisan, their father Alars, and Alars' parents were the Eternals Kronos and Diana, who bore both Alars and Zuras, who was Thena's father. So in the comics at least, Thena and Thanos are first cousins, as are Thena and Eros. So stop hitting on your cousin Eros, this ain't the British royal family. But it's seems like the movies are suggesting there is a difference between the ten synthetic Eternals in the Eternals film, who would not be capable of producing offspring if the Celestials intended them to be exposable temporary caretakers, a difference between them and the Eternals of Titan with a bloodline of Alars, Thanos, and Eros. And that might be because in the comics, Alars actually left Earth for Titan after a succession dispute with his brother Zuras. If the movies were to explore this history, the synthetic versions of Thena, Icarus, Sir and the rest could actually be carbon copies based on original Eternal forms that were capable of life cycles and reproduction. Alternatively, since the Eternals, despite their synthetic nature, still bleed and are made up of bone and tissue, etc., Thanos, Eros, and Alars may very well have been synthetic creations that were placed by Celestials on Titan, and there might be no common ancestor of Kronos in the MCU putting an eros Thena hookup back on the table, boys. Now, Eros based on him having his own sphere, either is or was the prime eternal of Titan. Does not seem like Titan ever underwent an emergence, though. The planet and its core were still clearly intact when we visited it in Infinity War. However, that could just be because Titan suffered an ecological disaster that wiped out most of its population, which, if a celestial seed were planted there, would deprive that gestating celestial of the life force energy needed to hatch. Now, Thanos suggested Titan fell due to not enough resources to go around, too many mouths to feed, implying over population, but perhaps Titan's population peaked and fell due to natural resources failing to keep up before that peak could reach the critical mass point to hatch the Celestial. Again, we don't know yet if a sleeping Celestial is seeded on Titan. Erishim didn't necessarily seed every planet in existence, implied by the shot of Earth already existing before the seed was sent. The Titan Eternals may actually have been given a totally different purpose from totally different Celestials. Now I gotta tell you, sometimes my eyes get uh, a little numb from staring at screens this long, and all that activity just makes it really hard for my eyes eyes and my whole body just to settle down at nighttime, especially considering no matter how hard you try, it's just so hard to get your bedroom completely dark at night. I got chargers, alarms, power strips everywhere. It's a minefield of distracting lights brightening up my room and making it harder to fall asleep. Well, that is where the Blue Blocks Remedy Sleep Mask comes in handy. Thanks to Blue Blocks for
for sponsoring this video. We already know blue blocks from their blue light blocking glasses, but their sleep mask goes further and blocks out 100% of light so that you can sleep better. It has adjustable eye cups and an adjustable strap to give everyone the perfect fit. It works for people who sleep on their bellies, on their sides, and on their backs. You can fully open your eyes while wearing it. Like, my eyes are open right now. Does that freak you out? Don't worry, it should only freak you out if like you wake up next to me in your bed. And that should freak you out uh, unless you're my fiance watching this video. But uh, she doesn't watch these videos. So it should freak you out. Really, it's just been so great for improving my sleep as well as like meditation, napping, travel. You just pop these bad boys on while flying and you're gonna be doing great. Go to blueblocks.com slash new rock stars or just click the link below and get 20% off your remedy sleep mask today. The code is automatically applied for that 20% off. So all you need to do is click the link below and enjoy free shipping on orders over $115. To get the best sleep possible right now, get yourself a Blue Blocks Remedy Sleep Mask. Go to blublox.com slash new rock stars, or just click the link below to get 20% off your order. Code automatically applied at checkout. So the celestial family tree grows wider, of course, humanity and mutant kind branched out. But the prologue of this film confirmed that the celestials existed before the Big Bang, suggesting that there was some form of existence long before that all happened. Happen. So to extend the tree further upward, we could go by the updated Marvel mythology from the Ultimates Volume 2, number 6 of 2017, which stated that everything actually began with something called the First Firmament, the very first living embodiment of the original universe long before eternity, and he created the Aspirants, and then they created multicolored rebels in their own image, whom we know as the Celestials. Everyone went to war, eternity was formed, and within eternity, the Celestials were left to run things. Actually, a war with the Aspirants could have been how Arishem got his weathered, scarred appearance. So getting back to what purpose Eros, Thanos, and Alars might have had on Titan, there was that curious exchange between Gilgamesh and Kingo that mentioned Odin and Thor as contemporaries. Thor used to follow me around when he was a little kid. Now he's a famous Avenger and won't return my calls. So the Eternals and the Asgardians knew each other, and that's a huge deal. Because in the Earth X comics, the Asgardians are retconned as aliens that were manipulated by the Celestials who put them in the third tier of the Celestial Mutation Cycle that makes their appearance, their powers, and identities defined by the belief of the people they protect, in this case, the Norwegians of Midgard circa 965 AD. So the Asgardians could be yet another creation by the Celestials given an Eternal-style protection protocol. Rivals like the Frost Giants, the Cronins, could be classes of deviants that the Asgardians were tasked with keeping in check. But I just think this tells us all that there is far more diversity of philosophy among the Celestials and their different classes of Eternals than Erishim would have us believe. Erishim was just one of many Celestials who performed different functions, and we actually saw others during the film's cosmic montage. We saw Jemaya the Analyzer, Nezar the Calculator, and Hargan the Measurer. We met Isan the Searcher in the first Guardians, and there are plenty of others in the pages of comics with really fun names like Oneg the Prober. Ow. Oh. So I think Eros might have been installed on Titan by a Celestial other than Erishim, with the goal of spreading love throughout the universe. After all, he is the god of love, is he not? So what celestial would be that into love? Maybe the only one we've heard talk about his member. Yes, Drax? I got a penis. It's not half bad. Yes, Eros could have been installed on Titan by Ego before Ego had his memory wiped and was reduced to a floating brain in space. Perhaps he was a gestating celestial who came early. I just think there is a pretty characteristic resemblance between Ego and Eros. Both of them score pretty high on the DTF meter. So if this were true, it would make Eros and Thanos something of stepbrothers to Peter Quill and for Peter Quill to be in love with his adopted step niece. Uh oh, suddenly this became a Woody Allen documentary. Just looking ahead at the God of Love's next fuck, there is one Marvel release with love in the title, Thor Love and Thunder, which which will feature many of these characters, the Asgardians and the Guardians of the Galaxy, as well as Gore the God Butcher, whose weapon in the comics has a history of decapitating the celestial nowhere. So this all seems to be headed in one horny direction. So keep this problematic family tree handy. To support this channel, check out one of our great merch options at newrockstarsmerch.com. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter at EA Voss. Follow New Rockstars and subscribe to New Rockstars for analysis and breakdowns of everything you love. Thanks for watching. Bye.